Hi everyone, this is Zach. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to make a very quick video talking about auction market theory, how the market facilitates trade from one area of balance to the other areas of balance, and uh, the market maker's role and intention in this. I'm going to oversimplify stuff, so just bear with me. Um, so the the market is an auction. I'm sure you've heard me say that before and tons of other people that are involved in markets. What does that mean? Well, basically the market and the market maker are trying to facilitate trade in areas where there's the most transactional potential. The market maker's job is not to take price up, it's not to take price down. Their job is to facilitate trade in areas where there's the most transactional potential. So if 10,000 contracts can be traded here, but only 500 can be traded here. The market maker will always keep price here because they make money on transactional fees, just like an ATM. Every time you every time you uh, use the ATM, you you give them I think it's like a dollar twenty-five here in Canada. You give them a dollar twenty-five in transaction fees, right? They don't care if I have a million dollars in my bank account. They don't care if I'm if I only have ten. They're taking the fee. That's all they care about. And they want to move their ATMs into places. This is an ATM. They want to move their ATM, aka price, into the place where there's the most foot traffic, where there is the most, quote unquote, transactional potential. So the market spends time balancing. When it's in a range, it's called a balance. Some people call it a rotation. I just call it a balance, right? So when it's in a range, there's a lot of transactions going on. The market maker will keep price here until they realize there's enough transactional potential up here and aggressive participants start pushing the price in order to fulfill um, desired inventory up here. So a bunch of people that bought here set orders over here and then start pushing the price up here to fulfill their orders up here. Um, that really won't help you too much in the day-to-day -day of day trading. All you really need to do is be able to define these zones and then be able to understand what phase of the auction market theory we're in. So there's a couple of phases and a couple of setups. One is balance, then there's expansion slash imbalance. It's the same thing, whatever you want to call it. I call it expansion. Expansion is when we break out of a balance, there's a lot of volume and we're pushed or being pushed to another area of balance. The market will never just go straight up. It will never just go straight down. It goes from one area of balance, then it gets in balance or enters expansion into another area of balance. It does that, gets to a new area of balance, and then this same process repeats itself till it goes to another one. Or it could go higher into an area of balance up here, whatever, however you want to, uh, however the market wants to move. Now there's a couple of um, candlestick setups that go into um, uh, imbalances in the auction market theory. One of my favorite ones is called a failed expansion. So when we're breaking out of a range, right? and we fail to su sustain that expansion and price comes back inside of balance or value, um, it's very likely that they rotate all the way to the other side of value once they re-enter. So what does that look like? They expand out and then they fail to hold that expansion. And because a bunch of people got long right here and they put their stops somewhere over here, as price enters back in, they're forced to sell their positions, and that's what creates the flush, right? A failed expansion. This is like a, a trap. Trapped buyers, trapped sellers, right? Failed expansions can be to the top side or to the bottom side, right? Um, so yeah, these are the few phases. Balance, expansion, failed expansion, back to balance. That's the phases, right? Um, now let me show you some examples. Here's an example I found from, let me hide these drawings, 
Oh. Here's an expansion. I found. Here's a, a balance I found. Um, and a example, a, a pretty good one. Um, or maybe I need to show drawings here. Let's get a box. How do I get a box? Here we go. So you can see we have a range right here, right? We have a balance. Um, within that balance, we have a high and we have a low and we have a failed expansion. When the market failed to sustain the breakout below um, our balance, so that being our balance, right? When they fail to sustain a breakout or an expansion attempt, they came back inside, retested, and then went all the way to the other side. Now you can see, even in the candlestick pattern setups, how aggressive these candles are. It's because a bunch of people are selling down here, they're getting trapped, and then they're being forced to liquidate. And their liquidation is what causes um, the upward move. That and People know when these patterns occur that there's a bunch of trap sellers. So the buyers start pressing on those trap sellers and then the momentum of those sellers covering um, and the momentum of the buying creates massive moves. Um, and then you can see um, when we're expanding away from, from um, balance, they also do this setup where they break out, retest the upper areas it's never exact, it's just a zone, always remember, and then they go, right? Now, if we take a look at ES, um, over the last few days, you can see uh, there's a couple of attempts to do something similar. Sometimes there's failed expansion, sometimes it's just clean. Um, as you can see, here, let me draw that more clearly. We have a range high, we have a range low. Oof, my drawing are not straight. <laughs> um, you can see once we hit the lows, we go to the highs, and then we go to the lows, and then we broke out. They did some sort of um, back test here. It was very small. You can see it here. Um, sometimes the moves just happen quickly, right? And then they retested this range. Um, oftentimes, when they when they back test, it's not always right away. You get a small back test here, but if it's not a big enough one, like this was Jackson Hole, there was a big news event that happened. Not enough people got their orders fulfilled, so the market maker brought price back to that zone, fulfilled them, and now they're taking price up, right? So uh, range rotations. Now these are setups I'm showing you on a 30 or on a 15 minute. You can see them on a daily chart. You can see them like, for example, on a daily chart, you could see failed expansion right here. I, I remember this one, but look, you can see failed expand to the other side, failed expand to the other side, the back test, downward move, right? So you can see these on the daily, on the 30 minute, one hour. You can even see them on the one minute. For example, a trade I took today, if I go to 9.30 a.m. at the open, let's take a line and put it across a vertical line. Let's put it at the 9.30 a.m. open. So this is where the market opened, right? If you if you take a look at this, the opening balance of the market today was the sorry the opening uh, thirty minutes opening hour of the market was a balance, right? So you can see they created a range low, a range high, a range high a breakout expansion attempt that failed to hold, they came back in, retested it, and then went to the other side, right? So you could have played, 
um, right here, you could have played right here, you could have played right here, and you could have played right here. Uh, what I chose to do today is I I missed this attempt. It was too quick. Um, I didn't see as clear order flow signals when it was happening. So I just took this one. Um, there was a balance. We broke out of the balance, retested, and there were some, some key levels here that I, I knew the market makers wanted to go for or were likely to go for at like 61s. So I took it long here. Um, I took it long here. Stop right there. I believe it was a little under three to one today, the trade. So you can see these these patterns are fractal. They happen on a one minute chart. They happen on a 15 minute chart, an hourly chart, a daily chart. You'll see them everywhere. Um, what I like to do is combine larger time frame auction phases with smaller time frame auction phases. And then you really start improving your win rate. Uh, so yeah. I hope that was helpful. Please give me any feedback you guys have. And yeah, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, come join the conversation. Bye.